Hey guys, what's up? It's Nichols from Apple Tech Geeks with a video that I've uh, been meaning to make for a little while. So recently I got a Nintendo 64 off of eBay for uh, around uh, 60 bucks. Pretty good buy. So I'm going to do a uh, first look and a full scale rundown of this. So uh, this is part one. So this is going to be about the design of the uh, games, the console, and the controller itself. So, uh, and then part two will be of the two games, or basically the one game, because the other game is really bad, but we'll get to that. So, uh, yeah, that'll be some gameplay. So, let's, uh, let's get started with the console itself. This is actually a relatively small console, and for its time, it was, one of, it was basically the last uh, cartridge based console and it was the first and only uh, 64 bit um, cartridge system so uh, so let's just take a look at the design so on the uh, left side there is the power switch which when it's on it powers up that light right there um, so in the middle is the memory expansion, which you need for some games like Donkey Kong, uh, whatever the Donkey Kong game is. And this console will happen to came, come with it. And it looks like this. I don't know how to take it out because I can't figure it out. But anyway, so just uh, it's inside there with uh, the lid covering it. And on the uh, right side is Nintendo's traditional reset button, which has been on every one of their consoles since the uh, NES. Uh, and then at the top is the uh, cartridge slot, which you would take your uh, cartridge and just push it in. That's it. And just pull it out. And compared to all the other consoles at its time, it's the only console to have the four... Um, four player ports um, it's the only one again that was cartridge based and because of the cartridge based it's very thin and a whole lot harder to break compared to those systems so uh, on the on the uh, side there's just a ventilation port which this thing does not overheat at all it doesn't even get hot on the back is the uh, huge AC adapter it goes right in here uh, and this is different from other systems because the AC adapter on other systems would be at the end on the plug and would make it really hard to plug in while on the uh, Nintendo 64 it's just a regular uh, two prong plug uh, in the United States anyway and you would just plug it into the wall so then on the left side or yeah right there uh, this would be your AV port, or red, white, and yellow cables. Um, it came with a RF modulator uh, adapter that you could just plug in there and use on an RF-based TV, or, I mean, a coaxial-based TV. And on the bottom are these uh, f two legs, which I think, uh, I think look very good. And then uh, another two stands. And then there's the extension bay, which would have been used for the Nintendo 64 DD or Nintendo 64 disk drive, but was not released outside of Japan, so that was useless in the United States. Um, at the top, just some boring information about what not to do and do. Uh, so yeah, that's that's the console itself. So moving on to the game. Uh, this happens to be NASCAR 99, which you'll see in the second video, because it's the only game I can play. Uh, I got two games with the system. I got NASCAR 99 and Bass Fisher, or Bass Hunter 64, which is awful. If you're buying a Nintendo 64, that game is awful. This game's a little better, but... Because of the postal service and how delightful it is. 
uh, I ordered into Super Mario 64 and it somehow is stuck somewhere in California. I don't know if actually if it's actually going anywhere or what. It's just in California according to the shipping. It's only been a few days, so I'm not worried yet. So let's go back to the design of the game. Now every game looked exactly like this. On the front is the game's label itself for this one NASCAR 99 like I said on the back just again warning labels which have grown over time compared to uh, Super Nintendo and Nintendo uh, Entertainment System on the top as many gamers would say where's the end label every system every um, console manufacturer had did this all the games before it so I'm just going to go based off of Nintendo. Every system before uh, the Nintendo 64 had an end label. Like on this Nintendo uh, Entertainment System cartridge. End label. So I could tell that it's Legend of Zelda. Or, I mean, I could tell by the gold game itself. But every system... Did ever is Super Nintendo had one? I don't have a Super Nintendo, so I can't show you a game. But uh, Sega Genesis had it, Sega Master System, and then the last cartridge based systems for every console manufacturer did not have end labels. And everyone, every gamer would say that's a terrible idea. So, and then on the bottom is just a part that you would uh, well the port so that you could put it into your system and uh, oh on the console uh, it does have the dust cover flaps so protects your system from dust and so now let's talk about the uh, the controller this is a strange controller compared to the Super Nintendo controller and the later GameCube controller, this thing is a monster. Mostly because of three reasons. You can't hold it you can't hold it like a normal controller and expect to reach every button. They even say that in the manual that you can't do that. So instead they say, here's method one, here's method two, and here's method three of holding your controller. So it has a, it has the All right, so I'm back, and as I was saying on the controller, so yeah, you had to hold it one of three ways. One, two, or three. So it has the main buttons that you would need on every controller. The uh, plus pad, the um, joystick, I don't remember the name off the top of my head. Uh, the start button. Uh, this is the first system... This is the first Nintendo system not to have a select button on it. Um, then it has A and B. Now, what has evolved over time is the C pad, which is useless for most games. But in GameCube, it's another circle pad. Um, so, and then on the top is the L and R buttons. And on the back is the Z button which is in a very strange location and then as you can see right here this is where you put in a Nintendo 64 um, game pack which is like a memory card so you put it into this slot or you would use a Nintendo 64 rumble pack yeah back then it wasn't built into the system itself so and then at the end you have your uh, controller plugin now going back to the console, this is um, for its time it was historic because it had four controller ports. Most systems only had two. So you get to play four player games. And that's what made games like Mario Kart and uh, GoldenEye so popular because everyone could play. So just plug it in to uh, player one and that's it. And then just pull it out. That's all. So uh, yeah, so that's that's the Nintendo 64 itself. 
and the controller and a game for example um so my first thoughts of this console because um because i've had it for a few days now i've been playing it um it's a really good console for its age and stuff um i mean it was a drastic jump between the gamecube and the nintendo 64 but both consoles earned their place in history so going back to the nintendo 64 itself um for its age it's really good like i don't have any of the other consoles that were going against the nintendo 64 but i'm sure like i've i've watched a whole bunch of other videos and re read reviews about the console itself um that it was in many ways better than other consoles especially when it came to 3d graphics and the one thing that most game developers did not like was the fact that it was cartridge based but nintendo liked that it was cartridge based because the load times which were atrocious at that point on cd based consoles took a whole lot less time because it was all stored right there on the board instead of running through a cd and trying to find the correct file um so the console itself is very simple not not very hard to use at all just make sure it's plugged in turn on your tv and that's it just flip on the power switch and the game starts immediately there's no startup screen or anything just welcome to the game that's all and that's all you need that's the easiest way to play a game um so stay tuned for part two where i play nascar 99 and explain why bass fisher 90 uh, bass Fi bass hunter 64 is the worst game ever made for this console and maybe in history because it's just really bad so stay tuned for part two and uh so, sorry I've been missing, I have been sick and really busy the past two weeks. Um, so, I will be featuring this console in a Throwback Tuesday video once I get Nintendo, uh, Super Mario 64, if I ever get it. Hopefully I do, because I really spent a lot of money on it, so I really don't want to not be able to get the game. Um... At some point, I'm going to try and get GoldenEye and Mario Kart and Donkey Kong and all that for the console as well. But uh, for the time being, it's going to uh, it's just going to be NASCAR 99, and that's about it. I really would like to forget about Bass Hunter. So, uh, yeah, stay tuned for part two.